Hi everyone, hope you guys are doing well. Now, what we have done in the previous lesson, we've just finished up our tags, as you can see. Um, I just added some styling to my tags to make it kind of the same. And the same kind of blue instead of that turquoise color. Now, the thing is in this episode, now, we're going to be discussing this little section. This is going to be a section on its own. The reason for that is uh, the security concerns that comes with a WYSIWYG editor. Now, the problem that you might find is, um, normally what I would do, let me just start off here first. Normally what I would do with a WYSIWYG editor is I will only use this if I can trust the user, all right? So then I will use a WYSIWYG editor. So that means if the user is either the owner of the website or an admin user, I will allow them to use the WYSIWYG editor because with this, you can kind of do a lot of harmful things because what will happen now is in the database, you will actually save the HTML characters. So basically the div elements, the script elements, the tags and all that kind of stuff that will be saved in the database. And then basically when it runs, it will run in the browser basically when we display the website or the elements itself now this this might not be new to you now the thing is with this i would normally use it if i trust the user to be able to not do anything malicious to the website but there's a way that we can avoid that from happening so let's say that's why i'm putting the WYSIWYG editor for the public so basically anyone can be able to use the WYSIWYG editor and display the information. But now there's a problem. So if the user types in anything malicious here, it gets stored in the database, and when the, the post or the thread gets displayed, it actually runs whatever malicious code there is. So the two ways, there's a couple of ways to avoid it. First, is not to use a WYSIWYG editor to actually just use the HTML uh, text area, just kind of without the WYSIWYG editor. The user types in the information. There's no script tags or anything that the user can get into. It actually saves it in a database. But now there's an a, so with the WYSIWYG editor, the user can type it in. But now with Laravel, it comes with a blade syntax. Let me let's go to Visual Studio Code quickly. Around in order to display the information, you see the double brackets. Let's just do this. These brackets basically, what it does, it actually escapes any information, uh, divs or anything that comes from the database. It actually just renders everything as plain text. But now, the thing is, that's why when we do a WYSIWYG editor, we actually have to use the bang bang in order to say no. We trust the information that comes from the database. All right. Now, the problem with that is if you don't trust the user, I would not advise to do this. Okay. So now the way to avoid this from happening is like say, okay, I don't trust the user, but I still want to render the HTML elements because I want to use a WYSIWYG editor. So in order to do that, we use a HTML purifier. Meaning there's certain, let me, let's go to the browser quickly. Now, th this Me Web Studio Purifier have written a nice package that actually uh, purifies any WYSIWYG editor things uh, that you save basically in your database. Now, you can have it for Laravel 5 to, I won't even recommend it to actually have 5 or anything lower than 7, actually. So if you have any of those uh, Laravel installation, please upgrade. As there's no more security updates because security is actually a big issue in web development. All right, so basically what you do is you just purify that input. All right, so in our case, what we're going to do is the request that we're going to pass through, we can just do it like this. 
All right. Well, then we purify it just to make sure there's nothing malicious in it. Then we save it to the beta database. And then we can actually just go in here and we can actually render that like this. Then we can actually do this after we purified it. All right. There's one way to do it. The other way is not to use a WYSIWYG editor in just a plain text area. So in this case, we're using a WYSIWYG editor. What we would have done is we just would have done a text area like this. All right. So there's the other way to do it just to be safe. But if we do all the extra steps, do the installation and stuff like that, we can actually prevent that from happening, all the security issues and stuff like that with just doing a purify on it okay and another way to do it as well is if you create your own custom tags or you can use markdowns where they actually use a double pound i think for bold and underscores for italics and stuff like that so but most users won't know how that works and stuff like that. So that's why the WYSIWYG editor was actually for people that used to Word and stuff like that. So they can use it. All right, enough of that. I will link two resources for you. I will link this in the description. Uh, the purifier, obviously. I will link this in the description because we're going to install this one now. And I will link an example from Stackhawk. They actually got nice little explanation of what is cross-site scripting and stuff like that. So a nice detailed explanation of everything. I will leave this in the description for you so that you, if you want to go and read up more about it, then you can do that as well. All right. Now, the other thing is he made use of a middleware, just a middleware that you actually put over your whole site. So the middleware actually runs and Basically, take all the requests, and this is just basically uh, HTTP stuff. Basically, what it strips the tags, and then it will just check for anything that is malicious. Okay. But we're not going to do that, all right? But you can go and if you want to read more about that. But what we're going to do is we're going to use the purifier, this right here, to actually just kind of to make sure that we're safe. All right, that's why I used the WYSIWYG editor. Otherwise, I would have just used the plain text area. Okay, so enough of that. So let's get started with the installation. So what we do is composer require. Okay, so this will link will be in the description. Just click the link. And then you will go to this part right here and just go down to composer require right here. Okay. All right, in our code editor, we just insert that. And then obviously open your terminal and then we press enter so that it installs it. All right, so now that that is done, now the next part that we want to do is let's just follow the example right here. So the, right, so we do a composer update or a composer install. In my case, I'm just going to do a composer install. All right, now that's running. Right, it says nothing to install, update, or remove. So everything is all good. Right, if you're using Laravel 5 to 4, this is what you have to do uh, for Laravel 5 Plus. We just want to do a vendor publish, so we actually just do this. Let's just copy everything in there. Then we go to our editor, then we just put it in our terminal and press enter. Okay, so it's published. So on a convict. Purifier. So let's just go there, open it up. All right. So basically, here is the the things that will be checked, what is allowed, all that kind of stuff. So div, strong, title, all the things that they're looking at. So I'm just going to leave the default settings, everything as it is. So if you want to change anything, please read up more about it and stuff like that. So I'm just going to leave it as is. Okay. So let me just do this. All right, so I'm just going to close this off. All right, so what I'm going to do now is I'm actually just going to create a route for our update for our store method. Okay, so let's go in here. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to do a route. Then we're going to do a post route. Remember, a get route is for to get information. And if we want to store information, we use a 
post right and if we want to update the information we use the put right okay so in this case which i'm just going to do a slash again like that otherwise this this round right here that we're creating will clash with this one right here and we don't want that to happen okay so let's just do like this and this is just going to go to our thread controller okay uh, thread controller class and this will be a store so like this okay and let me just going to create a name round and this will be store okay so this will basically be threads store all right so if we go to our controller right here so it goes to that method right here so this is the method that we're working with okay so in our uh, form right there we just need to go to the round so open the double bang bang curly braces and then we're just gonna go to threads dot store this right right here okay and the method in there will be a post method because we're using the blade ui component so it automatically automatically comes with a crf token and a method of post all right so it's all done so we don't have to add that okay so for the ones that's new let me show it to you all right you go to bladeuikit.com then you go to get started and then you just go down to form under the form then you'll have as you can see like the the form right there the action obviously the route that we put it in right now it will actually give us the two routes uh, two method uh, two inputs it will give us an input hidden of the token the crf token and it also also give a hidden input of the method of post right there okay so this is the output so if you want to check more about it then just go and read it there all right i will also link this in the description for anyone that's new all right so i'll put this link in the description all right so the next part is let's go back all right so we got our store method right there then we got our title category in our tags and our body right here now the part that i want to do is i just want to return the request just to see if we get all the information from the form all right so you obviously can do a die and dump of the request like uh, let me just copy this down since this is a learning channel i'll show you everything that i can let me just do this die and dump and then we just add the request like this you can do both ways right i will show you both ways so i'll just show you this way first because it just returns a json object and this one will return all right, so let's just do the create. Uh, it just puts as required right now. I'm just going to remove the required for now. Let me just do that because I just kind of want to do my testing. Later on, we can add the required right there. As you can see, it returns the title, category, and about right there, but it doesn't show the tags. So we can see that is a bit of an issue for us see that's what i would normally do just to make sure everything returns that i want to return and then i will fix it All right we don't have an about we have a body so let's just do this because if we go to our threat model let's go there threat model right here as you can see we got a title body slug and category id and author id right there so this one right here so we got not a about we got a body okay so just change that for the tags uh, let's just quickly add a tag and see what returns now let's just save it go back to the browser do this and let's just do the create again right. let me just refresh this select one tag and do a create as you can see we got our title category which is there we got our tags as well and we got our body so all is good because the auth id we will get from the authenticated user so that is all good now let me show you the die and dump let's go back go to the thread controller let me just do this and do the die and dump method let's refresh that and resend it 
Now, as you can see, this is basically a die and dump method. It returns you a whole lot of information. Now, the one that you're looking for is the attributes parameter. Sorry, you need to go to the quest input back right there. So in there, you will have your token, your method, your title, the category, and obviously the tags that gives you an array in the body of null. So that's why for me, just to return the request, a JSON object, it actually just shows everything that I need easily, quick and easy. All right, you can do both methods, all works, and that's it. Whatever works best for you. But the thing is, they're returning just a request just to check all the information that I get and from there I work. The die and dump works very well if you want to start to debug the code and stuff like that. So both works well for me. But I use just the return the request if I just want to check all the values that comes from the request. That's it. All right. So let's see. We already got everything right, right there. So what we will do in the next one, we actually will handle that request and then we will use the purifier on our input all right thank you guys for watching if you like the video please give it a like if you don't please give it a dislike and yes i'll see you in the next one where we'll be able to use all the data that we get from the form right here and just store them in the database in under the store method all right and after that we're obviously going to do the edit update and the delete methods all right so for now in the next one we want to use it to be able to store the thread all right thank you guys for watching and see you in the next one goodbye